Ladies and gentlemen, Violent Games here. Today I'm going to be talking about control freaks and why I think you should use them. And also, I do want to go into, a little bit beforehand, how I used to play video games and how I play video games now in 2016. So without further ado, let's get started. So let's take, oh shit, slap my microphone. Let's take my controller here. My controller is just a standard PlayStation 4 DualShock controller. There are no fancy buttons. These are screws. <laughs> you know, just, you know, nothing special here. So, traditionally, when I would play video games growing up, throughout my youth, when I was a youthful lad who didn't have quite as big of a beard, but I did have a beard around, like, 16, I think, um... <laughs> I would traditionally play video games in a very relaxed position, like this, kind of a standard fare, my, my, my palms of my hands are on the controller, just wrapped around comfortably, and I would kind of just, you know, my right thumbstick would always be slamming the end of the controller, that's something that would, would always be a staple, because, you know, this is the type of aiming that you would traditionally do, at least I would, I don't know how you play video games back in the day, or even presently, but... <clears throat> That's just how I play video games. I would never change the button layout, and I would never change sensitivity. Now, let's let's fast forward to 2016. Different story. I have these things called control freaks, which I now put on my controller. Uh, the aforementioned control freaks, of course. Um, if you're curious as to which ones I'm using right now, I am using the Inferno ones that they um, made. I think they're a more recent one. I'm not sure how recent, but I really like them because they're extremely concave in the middle. I really like that. It's very comfortable for me. Um, but let's get into some of the weird different mannerisms that I've adopted over the years and when I adopted Control Freaks. So the way I hold my controller now is actually very different. In order to accommodate for the height of the Control Freaks, I actually bring my hand up a little bit on either side. And you might not be able to tell what that looks like just from this position. So what I'll do is I'll show you the palm of my hand is no longer touching the controller at all. In fact, the controller kind of rests right in here as opposed to anywhere else. So my hands are arced up. The, the tips of my fingers are closer to the L2 and R2. Because of that arc, traditionally it would be like these parts of my fingers. Now it's kind of arced up, as you can see. So I am moving from like a completely different position to kind of make this happen. And what this has done for me is because I've been raised up, and this is kind of the whole control part of control freaks. I'm doing air quotations off camera like an idiot. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> Even I make myself laugh. Jesus. Um... <clears throat> is that they say that you have more control and the reason that is is because with control or with, with taller analog sticks with taller control sticks I almost said every little subtle movement you do with your thumb is going to register at as an input and what this allows you to do is at higher sensitivities you can actually rely on using this to aim and actually do precision aiming but when you need to do a fast drag scope, you can do this, and because of your higher sensitivity, you're going to be able to actually move really, really quickly from target to target, allowing you to do, um, some people call them flick shots, I call them drag shots, but, you know, if you have trouble with those um, terms, you could definitely look up videos explaining those. I'm not going to really cover that in this video, so... Basically, you get a variety of sensitivities to kind of choose from, even though your um, default sensitivity or your sensitivity that you set may say high or whatever, you can actually choose between slow uh, aiming speeds by barely moving the analog stick, or you can go to really, really fast by like flicking your analog stick all over and just kind of, you know, making it work that way. So that's really what control freaks essentially do. There's not a lot of magic to them. Um, you can set them up uniquely. So for example, the left stick, having a control freak isn't that necessary because your movement is always gonna be the same in video games. The fastest movement speed is gonna be this. A slower one for like stealth games is gonna be like a little slower, like you're barely gonna move it up for that. So, you know, that's always the same. The right stick is the one that really needs the control freak. So you can have two sets of control freaks, one being smaller and one being larger for your left and right sticks. Personally, I prefer to keep the freaks themselves the same because it adds symmetry to my controllers. 
I like my controller to be as symmetrical as possible. This is why I've always preferred the PlayStation controller over the Xbox one is because the way they lay out their buttons and stuff is a lot more symmetrical. You can see there's two buttons here. Um, both of the other sets of buttons are here and there are like a certain number of each, that being four. The analog sticks are also very symmetrical. So for me, a controller should be symmetrical. It's a little different on the Xbox controller, but that's why I prefer to have my freaks this way. Now that I've kind of rambled on about, <clears throat> you know, me and control freaks, why I use them, I'm going to go into four um, points basically saying why I think you should own these things. Um, number one being that they are economic. If you didn't know, at least for the PlayStation 4 controller, I, I, like, I just want to make that clear. I'm talking about the PlayStation 4 control, uh, controller here. The rubbers on the PlayStation 4 controller are very, very thin, surprisingly so. And I don't know if you could see like the under rubber or whatever, but they're very, very thin. They wear very, very easily. And to be honest, they're really, really small in comparison to the size of a Control Freak comparatively. You'll see the surface area on the Control Freak dwarfs the analog stick of the um, PlayStation 4 controller, being that it's supposed to really kind of engulf it. Having more surface area on your thumbstick is more comfortable, and I do like the concave design versus the little dome that kind of pushes out in the middle of the PlayStation thumbstick. And like I said, because that rubber is very, very thin, you're actually going to be increasing the life of your controller in regards to thumbsticks anyhow. So it just kind of helps you keep your controller alive a little bit longer. And they're only $15, and you know having to replace a $60 controller because the rubber rubbed off kind of shitty <laughs> you know what i'm saying like having to buy a whole new controller for a uh, repair that should cost like five dollars or something you know just more economic for you point number two they are definitely more comfortable like objectively if you practice with control freaks this is going to be more comfortable for you having that larger surface area like i said just adds so much more comfort it, it, it's entirely a preference thing so i'm not going to go too far into that Let's move on to point number three. It encourages in experimentation within your own gameplay. Before I used Control Freaks ever, I didn't do anything to my controller settings. I didn't increase sensitivity. I didn't lower sensitivity. I didn't fuck with button layouts. Like before I used Control Freaks, guys, I was a standard casual gamer, like verbatim. I never fucked with anything. But when you put Control Freaks on, it really does force you to experiment with sensitivities because you want to get the full like benefit of actually using these things. So it really does encourage experimentation within your own gameplay. And I think experimentation is really important, whether you're learning to play a video game better, whether you're learning to play an instrument, that, that one, whether you're fucking, you know, learning how to learn a different style of doing a math problem. You know, there's... A lot of things that experimentation is good for science included so <laughs> yeah I think that's a really good point that these things bring up and finally the reason and definitely the most salient point of why you should have them and if I didn't mention it before then I'm an idiot is that they can give the player more aim speed options than the standard um, analog stick so those are the four points why I think you should get them now, just to add some more points and some more value to this video, I will also give you an alternative method to control freaks. I do not recommend these over control freaks. I think ultimately just spend the 15, 20 bucks and get the damn control freaks. They're really worth it. But if you're really fucking stubborn or just don't have the money at the time, there is an alternative method. So first off, you're gonna wanna hold your controller the way I was with the control freaks, with the default thumbsticks. You still get a bigger lift from this. This is a physical lift. This isn't actually a control freak lift. I do this myself to kind of give myself a little more um, options with my thumbs. <laughs> this, I know it sounds weird, but it's gonna make sense here in a second. So when, once you're arced up, if you're gonna wanna do a high sensitivity, you know, slow, precise aim speed, then what you're gonna wanna do is just take your thumb and arc it up just a little bit. So you see my, um, my hands are lifted, my palms are not surrounding the controller. So I'm gonna put my thumbs on the controller now, and now I'm gonna lift up. This is actually gonna give you a lot of the same benefits as a control freak. And I remember when my first control freaks were starting to die, the um, FPS Phantoms, that is, 
These are my old older ones. You can't really see the design too well, but there's a little skeleton in there. He's cool, but they're old and they suck now. Is that my um, control freaks would fall off the stick. One thing I would do is I would actually just arc my hand up just a little bit and I would bend my thumb to where I would get like as much... Um, what was it? Tallness? I don't know what to say. As much height as possible <clears throat> when it comes to, you know, being able to do that little aim speed. It gives you the same exact function as a control freak. Basically, every subtle movement you do with your thumb should register as an input. So as opposed to gaming like this, you're gaming like this. You have this nice, relaxed, you know, kind of slower um, movement speed for kind of aiming, but you also have the option to turn around really fast and do um, flick shots, drag scopes, whatever the hell you want. So this is just kind of a little technique that I recommend if you are just can't get control freaks for but for whatever reason, but still buy the fucking control freaks. They're so nice. Why wouldn't you use them? They're so nice. I I, I don't I can't I can't even right now, guys. I just can't I I just can't even right now. Anyways, guys, I'm gonna end this part here, and then I'm gonna um, try to illustrate some points by recording my TV awkwardly. The gameplay will be muted, so the audio is not gonna be a complete shit show. But I do want to show you a little bit of an example of gameplay with Control Freaks. Again, it's gonna be muted, so I might be a little distracted and might miss a bunch of shit. Well, you know, we'll we'll see. We'll see. Thanks for watching. If you did, we're gonna move on to the next segment. All right, guys, welcome to the gameplay segment of this video. Um, <clears throat> I just I just have to disclose that this looks fucking terrible on my end. I had to turn the brightness all the way down so that you can even see anything on this webcam. It does not handle light lighting well at all. So I'm just going to show you I'm um, just playing around in the um, training uh, arena, I think it's called, or training mode, whatever the fuck. Our practice range is what it says in the top left if I would read. Not very good at reading, as you may be aware. So yeah, we're going to use Widowmaker, obviously, because she's a high-precision character. I think high sensitivity usually works out with snipers a little bit better, historically. So yeah, let's use uh, Widowmaker. I'm just going to be showing off that I'm not using... I'm not slamming my analog stick around the screen to aim. So I'm just doing very slow, subtle movements. And that's how I traditionally will play with Widowmaker. I will do drag sh shots from time to time if I need to. Like, this works better on a lot of moving targets. So those two targets just went down to very quick snapshots. So I have that um, flexibility when I have these control freaks on. It really helps. And what I'll also do for you is I'm going to take them off. And I'm going to show you my arced method as well to try to pull off some of these similar precision shots. You see my thumb's kind of bent. I can kind of do the same thing. It is much more difficult is what I will say. And it feels a lot less natural is what I will say as well. Like I'm a little slower to the punch without my control freaks on for sure because I've been using them a lot. And my thumb just slid off the controller if you did miss that. I don't know if I got that on footage properly here. Let me raise up my hands a little bit. But it is possible to use 100 sensitivity with, um, without control freaks. But again, why would, you, why would you want to do that? It's just so much more convenient here. I'm going to pop them back on real quick. Just punching the ground here. I'm trying to, eh, The left one is not cooperating. Oh, my God. There we go. So, yeah. Essentially, what I've been saying is what is still the salient point now. When you're using control freaks, the whole point is that precise movements become registered inputs. And these precise movements is how you should aim for a lot of your shots. And this is how I'll aim with most characters who aren't Widowmaker. But I'll also have that option of a faster turn speed because of my very, very high sensitivity. It also makes it kind of nice to maneuver with certain like momentum abilities like this one. I can easily turn around on the fly. Like if I know there's a character below me... Um, and I jump like this. I can easily just turn around and scope in and then get the shot off. Like, being able to turn around on the fly, having the fastest turn speed possible in-game is very appealing to me. I'm also using the high acceleration um, aiming prefix. I'm not using the new dual zone prefix. Someone asked for a video on that, and if you guys are interested in me covering dual zone, I can. But, I don't know, it just doesn't feel too um, necessary. But 
I think I've done all I could do here. I'm, I've shown off the control freaks. I've shown off both of the methods I've taught you guys how to aim, or at least explained how to aim. Um, yeah, that's really all I can do. I am sorry that I could not use my capture card for this footage and then have like a separate cam on the side showing you my controller. I don't have tripods or anything for that. So I'm just doing what I could do at the time with this footage just to show you that, uh, hey, this is how I play video games. I play most video games on high sensitivity and I always use these things. They're so comfortable. You should consider getting some. The, the They're pretty dope. All right, guys, that's all I got for you today. Um, thank you for watching if you did. Um, this is Violent Games. Piss and Waff.